Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to have you here. Today we're focusing on the power of the ServiceNow platform by showcasing another awesome solution built on it. So I've invited the founder of one of the most popular apps on the ServiceNow store, Mitch Stutler of Vivid Charts. Hey Mitch. Hey Rob, thanks for having me, excited. <laughs> no problem, it's been 10 minutes since we last talked. <laughs> That's right, luckily I get to talk to you quite a bit throughout the week. So of course I know the answer to all these questions because I actually work with you at Vivid Charts, but could you tell us about the genesis of Vivid Charts? Yeah, definitely. My entire career has been on the ServiceNow platform. Even back in college, I was interning for Fruition Partners and I was actually doing a lot of consulting and started getting a specialty while at Cloud Sherpas and Accenture of doing custom interfaces, whether that was CMS back in the day or Service Portal after that came out. Uh, and I actually was lucky enough to learn under Brad Tilton, if any of you have heard of him. He's great. But I was doing all sorts of UI work. And for whatever reason, anytime we had a custom reporting or chart requirement, it got passed to me. And I noticed that was happening more and more frequently. And I just started filing that in the back of my head. Okay, a lot of people have these custom reporting requirements that just aren't getting met on platform for whatever reason. I didn't really know what the reasons were back then. I just stored that away. And I always kept a list of potential ideas of businesses if I ever wanted to start a business. And basically came around time where I'd really get in that itch to start a business and start solving problems. And in 2018, that's when we started Vivid Charts. And that's where I really realized that there's a lot of space in the reporting side of things in platform on service now. So that's really how we got rolling. We didn't have a great idea of what exactly we were solving in the beginning, but we knew there were people who would want to work with us and we just started there. That's an interesting take that you know that there was something vaguely that had some demand in the market, but you didn't know where the precise point was. How did you make that first couple sales? Really, it was just showing that we're trying to help. It was like, okay, we hear you. We hear that you're not getting everything you need in platform with reporting. Again, for whatever reason, we were just showing that we want to help. So we put something out there, a really early minimal viable product, uh, which still had a lot of the core components to what we're using today. It's really that flexible architecture that lets you do uh, really almost anything with reporting in platform. So we just went to these customers and said, hey, we know you're probably having problems. Please tell us what they are and how we can help. And we want to partner up with you and figure this out together. How would you say that the product has changed since that first day? The big thing is in the beginning, it was very much so an admin function. Like you'd have to be a pretty powerful ServiceNow user to wield what we had put together. Uh, you do some really cool things once you got it figured out. But I'd still say the learning curve was, it was definitely there. Something we near the end of 2018 and really ever since have focused on is the ability to make it reach throughout the organization. So if you have a, a user in the HR org who wants to be able to report on her data and she might not be a ServiceNow expert, we want to make it easy enough that anybody could get their hands on it and get into that data with relative ease. I'd say that's the biggest thing that's changed. I found in my journey that when people talk about reporting, there tends to be this paradigm where they, they abstract. They just say, let's do reporting. And as we know, just at a base platform, that, that could mean two or three distinct things. It could be just building queries with the report engine. It could be managing list views. It could be some real in-depth stuff on performance analytics. So what does Vivid Charts bring to the reporting world? Yeah, it's a good question. So the way I think about it is... Those three things you just mentioned are covering a lot of use cases. And I know reporting sometimes gets a bad rap in ServiceNow, uh, a bad rep because people think it should solve every single thing under the sun. And that's just not fair to ask for it. I guess it's fair to ask for it, but um, it's just not there yet. So what we're seeing is when these reporting use cases aren't being met in platform, it ultimately ends up leaving the platform. The data leaves the platform to solve that problem elsewhere. Sometimes it's something really advanced, like an integration into one of ServiceNow's competitors, Tableau and Salesforce or Power BI. And more often it's something much more rudimentary like Excel or PowerPoint, because the people who are creating these reports are falling back on the tools they know how to use to get what they need. So that's really the angle we're helping solve is your data is leaving the platform. Why? Let's stop doing that. We can help. 
specifically, what is it Vivid Charts does that your leads and your customers take a look at and say, oh, wow, finally someone gets me? Yeah, I think oftentimes it's that portion of data leaving the platform. Ultimately, it's for some pretty sound reasons, like getting in front of a larger group of people within the organization. And that sometimes has some certain aesthetic requirements. You know, it can't look like an admin view or an admin report. It's got to look polished. It's got to look branded. And with that, what really resonates is the period periodic manual effort. So when we hear about people having to put together a weekly report in PowerPoint or a monthly or quarterly, that's where the the light bulbs go off for our customers. Okay, we could do that. We can make it look the way you need it, keep it in platform, and we can automate that so you're not going to have to do this every week or month. What's one of your favorite use cases from one of your customers? I think my favorite use case, just because it shows the power of how much you can automate these manual reporting and presentation cycles, we've got this one customer, a ServiceNow MSP. So they've got a group of like a thousand customers living in their domain separated environment of ServiceNow. And they have contractual obligations to report on a monthly or quarterly basis the performance they've been providing in their instance of service now, whether that's how many uh, different incidents there were, maybe that's what they've done with SLAs. There's all sorts of things they have to report on. And it was a largely manual effort. Literally for these hundreds or thousands of customers, every single month, they had a group of three or four people uh, manually creating these PowerPoint decks by pulling data out of service now. It was basically a full-time job for those people. Uh, and so they came to us and they had the idea of automating this whole process in Vivid Charts directly in platform. Uh, so now on the first of every month, it generates all of these slide decks in Vivid Charts pulling directly from the service now data. And then it's basically just one of their team members now spends about a day just polishing those off, making sure they understand what they're looking at. Uh, and then they deliver them to their SDMs, their service delivery managers to take to the customers themselves. So that is just a huge time savings. Uh, and there's also tons of other advantages to that being in platform as well. It's just a crazy use case. I think back to how I said in the beginning of 2018, uh, we had no idea really what we were trying to solve, but this hit that on the head, the automation of the reporting cycle. People really underestimate how much time is spent doing that. I, bet, I remember when I was a ServiceNow product owner, and since I was the only one who really understood the data structure, and there was no real presentation level reports, and sometimes you did need some finagling that you couldn't get done in the platform. I was perpetually exporting stuff, messing with it in Excel, and then getting it to the people that needed it. And I'd spend as much time doing that as I would building new solutions. It's nuts. It's nuts. And it's widespread. Everybody's doing it. I, I'm still doing it, unfortunately. It's crazy. Um, tell me if you want to scrap this question, if you, if you feel like you've answered it enough already, but how would a customer get value the fastest? Like, Say they, they love the features. How do your customers get value the fastest? The way I like to approach it is sort of like a snowball effect. So if you think about your team's monthly allocation and think about how much time they're spending reporting, which by the way, on average, it's 74 hours per month per team working in service now, not just your whole org, it's per team in service now. The way I like to think about it is take that 74 hours a month and figure out what is the smallest use case that we are currently dealing with where we're exporting data for a presentation or a report. And let's tackle that first. So like think small. So let's knock out the one that takes you one hour a week or two hours a week. Once we do that, then we have that time back where we could reallocate it to try tackling the next biggest one. And it just has that snowball effect where you're getting all of this time back a month over month. So it's really an approach where you could start small and immediately start getting value out of it just by getting that little bit of time back each month. That's awesome, man. And I've seen it myself too. The one use case gets to three, the three use cases get to five. And then you got to think of it as this is a great investment, not just this was money well spent. I'm getting literal return on that investment. That's right. What would you say has been from the business side, from the platform side, whatever, what's been the hardest hurdle so far? Yeah, I think it's getting awareness because the store, even though there's a lot of apps out in it, I think the store is still at a very young phase. And I think it's 
continually maturing and getting out there more and more. But, you know, we still run into customers even two and a half years into it. ServiceNow customers who will meet them and they'll be like, oh, this is perfect timing. We had no clue you existed, but this is exactly what we need. And so it's crazy to me that we haven't been able to do as good of a job as I would have hoped, really getting that awareness across the ServiceNow customer base because we know we could help every single one of those customers. This isn't a tiny little problem that's just a small subset. It's widespread. So really getting that awareness has been the toughest thing in my opinion. So of all the features that you've put on VividCharts since the beginning, what's the one that's your favorite? The one that is the most impactful, the one that's really let customers start doing some pretty crazy things is our Slate Editor. Uh, which is essentially an in-platform. I liken it most to a PowerPoint slide editor. It's this really free-form visual editor where you could put charts on it, you could put text, you could put shapes, you could style things. And I think that's really let people do a lot more with it, both aesthetically and just, you know, people are going to lean on tool sets and experiences that they're used to when they're trying to meet requirements. So this has let people who are really familiar with a PowerPoint type editor start doing some pretty crazy things in service now with Vivid Charts. We talk about all this data going off platform, but to some extent, so what? What's so bad about the data being off platform? Well, I mean, inherently, when the data is leaving the platform, that means you're actually doing some manual work there. So first off, there's potential for waste of time, not potential. It's like a high likelihood that you're spending more time there. Uh, secondly, uh, once that data leaves the platform, there's some problems. First off, it's stale. As soon as it leaves, it's no longer current. And that's just the nature of it. And you can get close to real time, but you'll never be right there like if you were in platform. Along with that, once the data leaves, it's you know just immediately a security concern in the sense that you don't know how that data is going to be manipulated to craft somebody's story or maybe even lost or maybe if it's in an excel sheet it can get sent to the wrong person you never know if it's not in platform and then the last thing i'd say to that is you've invested so much in the ServiceNow platform you've invested so much in automating all of your workflows when you pull this data out it's almost like a disgrace to all of that work you've put in um, that data belongs in platform. There's obviously use cases where it makes sense for it to leave, but to the best of your ability, that should be living in platform and helping drive those other workflows. And this should actually become a strategic asset. Tell me more about strategic asset. The way we think about reporting in platform, and I don't think many people think about it this way. I, I know the most successful service now customers do, but we think about it, is reporting a strategic asset or is it an organizational requirement? Like, is somebody telling you, give me this report every month? Or is this actually something that you're getting behind and is becoming powerful? And for the large part, most customers are just doing it because they're told to do it. Whereas if you make it a strategic asset, it could actually help move the needle for your organization. Now, once you get this reporting automated and keep it in platform, all sorts of doors open up. So it really should be viewed as a strategic asset. Tell me about a customer experience on Vivid Charts where they really exemplified this report is a strategic asset, not just an operational necessity. Yeah, I think there's a lot of good stories around customers doing just that. I, the one that comes to my mind first is this customer who is essentially pulling data out of service now every single month to manually manipulate it and then present it to their CTO. And this was taking up a bunch of this person's time. And they came to us wanting to automate that in Vivid Charts. And so they were able to get all of that time back that they were manually spending putting that together. But along with that, one of the unlocked benefits that they didn't even think about initially is in the past life, that data was only available 12 times a year. It was once a month after he ran that report and did, did his thing. Now when it's automated, whenever that CTO needs to look at that data, he just pulls up that Vivid Charts dashboard and it's live data. And with that, you could get right into that underlying data with a click if needed. So I think that really shows both sides to why you want this in platform and why you should be automating it. All right. So if a customer is listening to this and they want to free themselves from the chains of exporting the data off platform and they're worried about the reliability or they need that extra aesthetic kick, what would they do? Get a hold of us however you're most comfortable. Obviously, we make it very easy to get a hold of us, uh, whether through our website, emailing us, whatever that might be. 
Uh, along with that, we've got plenty of videos really outlining the product and how to use it. We've even got a free uh, certification training path that takes probably about an hour uh, that you're welcome to take, which you could find on our website as well. So uh, really, I'd say figure out at your own pace what you'd like to do. If you want a trial, feel free to go to the store and request a trial. Lots of ways to explore and lots of ways for us to help. So I, I just urge you to give us a look. All right, cool. Thanks for your time, Mitch. Uh, for those of you who want to explore Vivid Charts further, all the links will be in the description. Thanks for watching.